Hey brothers and sisters, Dominic Lucero here. I'm the instructor for Boilermakers Local Lodge 549 in Pittsburgh, California. And we've been doing a series of videos on trigonomic functions. And if you've been following along, uh, we've been going over Soka Toa. And we started off on Toa and worked our way all the way back. So a really quick recap of what we've done is we've gone over the Toa portion, which is tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent which really what that looks like is you're going to divide the opposite by the adjacent. We've gone over cosine, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is going to be dividing the adjacent leg, which brings us over here to sine. And sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, or the hypotenuse be dividing the opposite leg. So this is really important stuff for people in our craft and our profession to know. Uh, people hire union crafts because we are trained individuals who can get the job done right the first time. So trigonometry really comes into play whenever we're talking about anything that has to do with rigging, fabrication, layout, repair work, whatever it might be, including tanks. They, that's not always applicable to be able to use cords whenever it comes to tanks. Sometimes we have to be able to pull exact angles to be able to lay something out. So it's an extremely important subject. In my experience, it's something that a lot of people have struggled with. Uh, and I think my job here is to try to have a Boilermaker explain to you from a Boilermaker viewpoint really where trigonometry comes into play. And in my belief, really how simple it is. So today we're going to look at sine. So in its simplest form, the sine or the ratio of an angle is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have a triangle here and we have two known legs and we have to find out exactly what this angle is in here. And that's fairly simple. So as I had said before, it is opposite over hypotenuse or the hypotenuse dividing the opposite end. So if you know how to change fractions into decimals, where if we're trying to turn three eighths into a decimal, you always divide the numerator by the denominator, or the bottom one. So if you divide 3 by 8, it's not going to give you a whole number. It's going to give you 0.37. So that's essentially what we're doing here to find out the ratio between these two legs. So if we take 12 and we divide that by 25, it gives us 0.48. So 25 dividing 12 gives us 0.48, which I have said as many times, is that is now our ratio. What we are saying is that this leg right here is 48% of that leg right there. And as we all know, 12 times 2 would give us 24. Our hypotenuse over here is 25. Uh, so 48% is pretty close to half, so it makes good sense whenever we look at it. So our sine is equal to 0.48. And if you haven't seen these videos yet, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak like we haven't watched any of the videos previous to this. So sine has a bunch of different numbers uh, assigned to it. Every angle has a ratio that's assigned to it. And if you ever look at a trigonomic functions chart, uh, which are pages upon pages of all these numbers, that's what they're trying to say, is they're trying to say for a given degree, it's going to have a ratio of this amount. So either you can go look in your trigonomic functions chart, or if you have a calculator with a trigonomic function on it, we can very easily find out what that angle is. So if we're taking our ratio and trying to turn it into an angle, we're going to have to use the inverse function on your calculator. So the inverse function is, uh, you can find it because it says INV. So we're going to hit the INV button on our calculator, and then you're going to see a negative 1 go next to sine, cosine, and tangent, and that's how you know that we're in the inverse function. So now I can go ahead, go ahead and hit sine, and I can type in 0.48, and I get a number out of that. And it gives me 28.68, which simply tells me that 26.68 degrees 
is the degrees that is assigned to this ratio every single time. If you've got a different number, uh, make sure that you're not in the rad function. Rad is the metric version of angles. So if you're getting a different number, all you have to do is hit that rad and it should switch over to DEG, which stands for degrees. So that's fairly simple. It's easy to figure that out. Um, but what if we were given the angle and the hypotenuse and we needed to figure out the opposite way? Because more often than not, that's the problems I come across out in the field. It's not so much that I have to find out an angle. Usually blueprints are pretty good about giving us an angle for something, not very good about giving us lengths and sides. That's usually field verified. So I'm gonna move the camera over and we're gonna take a look at another example. So I remember when I was going through the first year apprenticeship and I was flipping through all of our books that have all the math and they have the trigonometry and stuff in it. And I was feeling a little bit confused by a lot of it. And I opened up the book and I seen an illustration uh, that got me really excited. So anybody who knows me knows that I do a fair amount of machining and stuff in my garage in my free time. I make all kinds of different stuff that I enjoy, but I have a real fascination with very precise measurements and very accurate uh, pieces of the equipment. And I opened up the book and I seen this thing called the sign bar. And I was like, oh man, I totally know what that is. I've seen that before. And it, and it uh, seemed to me at that point that trigonometry wasn't going to be so difficult. So really my hope is that there's a couple of things that can really get stuck in your head. So when I think about the tangent function, I always think about a framing square. Uh, because if I know what the base is, and then I use the tangent of the angle I need, it gives me the distance up that leg that I'm going to have to use. So if I have adjacent and I have the opposite, I can find out whatever angle I want with a simple framing square. Uh, so what I mentally got stuck in my head from that point on is anytime I'm dealing with sine, uh, I think of the sine bar. So this works in a very simple way. So we have this bar that has these two little pins on it. And that distance right there is very accurate, very precise, and it's five inches. It's five inches exactly on center. So if I had to machine a very specific angle, well, I can use the sine of that angle to figure out the distance that this needs to sit up to hold it at that angle, because this now becomes the hypotenuse. So let's give it a try. So we're going to do a very simple angle, one of my favorite angles to work with. We'll do 30 degrees. So we'll go ahead and hit sign. Make sure that you're not in inverse or anything like that. It just says S-I-N. So we we'll hit sign of 30 degrees, and that's going to equal 0.5. And that's why it's one of my favorite angles is because uh, the sign of 30 degrees is always going to equal one half. So one half of the distance of this under here is going to give me exactly 30 degrees. So if that's exactly five inches, it's going to be two and a half inches on the bottom. So how we would find that out if it was any other different number is we're going to now multiply. We'll clear that out. And we're going to multiply five times 0.5, which is going to give us half, two and a half. So I have here... Uh, two precision machine gauge blocks. And this is really how we would set the height on something like a sign bar. And these are pretty cool uh, because they have a very unique thing uh, characteristic about them where if you push them together and you twist them, they do what's called ringing and they'll stick together. So I have a two inch gauge block and I have a half inch gauge block. And if we sit this underneath right here, that gives us exactly thir a 30 degree angle. So I don't have my uh, bevel finder on me, uh, but I do have a center finder and you can rotate that level and we can set it at 30 degrees here. And if we set that on top, that's gonna give us, uh, it's gonna let us know whether or not this is 30 degrees. So hopefully you guys can see that. We set that down. If I wiggle it around a little bit, you can see that that bubble, it's dead nuts. It's right there at 30 degrees. So that's one of my favorite tools in my arsenal. Um, and it's been a very useful example. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll do one more example and then we'll cut this off.
So for our last example, I wanted to pick something that was fairly applicable, something that I personally had experience with. And in this situation, this is something I've come across in the field. Not exact, but it's pretty close. So what we have here is we have, uh, if we were working on some structural and we had a cross brace that was going to go across to a couple of pieces of iron and we get the beam shipped to us and we have to field fabricate these gussets and we actually have to weld them in place. Uh, this angle right here is not always going to be 45 degrees. Sometimes it varies, sometimes it differs. So if we had these gussets and we had to make them out in the, in the uh, weld bay and we had to drill holes for this beam to attach to, we got to know at what angle those holes are going to need to be drilled at. So what we would do is we would come out and we would pull from this uh, from end to end and we could find that that would be 22 feet. And then we come over and we pull uh, the length vertical up on it and we see that that's 18 feet. So we can see right off the bat um, that we're going to have to use the sine function. So like it says, opposite over hypotenuse or the hypotenuse is dividing the opposite side. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So nothing more than just dividing 18 by 22 and I get 0.818 or 81%. And again, all I did is I divided 18 by 22. Okay, so we'll go back to our calculator. And we know that 0.818 is our ratio. So for every one foot this direction, this is going to move 0.818 foot that direction. So now we go to our inverse function. The inverse sine, and again, that's when it has a negative 1 next to it, of 0.818, and that gives us 54.88, which means that this right here is 54. 0.88 degrees. So we're good. We can go ahead and uh, draw, so describe us a line on those gussets at 54.88 degrees, and everything should be fine. It's going to be 54.88 degrees off of the base right here. But as we know, there's 180 degrees in every triangle. And if that's not 45, that's not 45. So what we have to do now is we have to figure out what the top gusset is. So as we showed in the last video, very simple process, 90, which is this angle right here, plus 54.88. So when we take this angle, and we add it to that angle, we end up with 144.88 degrees, and we know there's 180 degrees in every single triangle, so subtract 144 from 180, and that gives us the missing angle. And our final answer is 35.12, which means off of this leg right here, this angle is going to be 35.12 degrees. And it's important to realize that we're saying that off of this base leg, we have 54.88 degrees there. And over here, we have 35.12 degrees off of this leg right here. And the cool thing about triangles is if we really wanted to double check our fit up, make sure everything was nice for these bolt holes, um, we 
this angle right here coming off this leg would actually be 35.12, and it's the opposite on that one. So I really hope this was helpful. Uh, we've gone through all the different functions, and I definitely plan on making more videos on uh, the usefulness of trigonometry out in, out in the field and many more videos along with that. If you ever have any questions, please come down here to the training center. I'm happy to have a sit down with you and make sure you get the education you deserve. Thank you.